Today we're going to learn about the rules for signing oxidation numbers in compounds. So what you would want to do as we go through here is write down the rules and maybe not all the verbiage, but write down the formula for each substance and write down how we determine the oxidation number. So just do the math for each substance that we write down. So let's begin. First of all, what is an oxidation number? It indicates the number of electrons that are either lost, gained, or shared as a result of chemical bonding. So what happens, we say there's three types of reactions. There's acid base, precipitation, and redox. In redox reactions, electrons are moved, and so it helps us keep track of those electrons. And then the last thing, a change in oxidation state, of, or the change in oxidation state of anything in a reaction tells you that you have an oxidation reduction reaction. Oxidation numbers are a way of keeping track of how electrons are lost or gained by each atom. So that's the main point. So here are the five main rules we want to follow. And so let's number these, and these are what you want to ex exactly write down. So number one, rule number one, an atom of an element has an oxidation number of zero. An atom of an element has its oxidation number of zero. For example, if you write the element sodium, oxygen, ozone, or mercury, in every single one of those, the oxidation number would be zero. That's rule number one. Rule number two, in a monatomic ion, monatomic just means it's one atom. This is rule number two. The charge is the same. The oxidation state is the same as the charge. For example, in sodium, which is plus one, the oxidation state is plus one. In chloride, which is minus one, the oxidation state is minus one. So that's that simple. Now these are the rules that you want to use to narrow things down. So this is rule number three. Fluoride is always negative one in its compounds. So fluoride is negative one. So if you have HF, there's two elements here. Fluoride would be negative one and hydrogen would be positive one. So it'll be a negative and positive and that's because it's a compound. Now in this atom we see there's three fluorines. Now each fluorine is negative one, but the phosphorus would be a positive three because it has to match up to that negative three. So for this one we have a positive three, I wanna write over here positive three, and then a negative one, because there's three fluorines that match up to that. Next one, this is rule number four. Now you notice oxygen comes next after fluorine. Fluorine's the most electronegative, so it gets preference. Oxygen is the second most electronegative element, so it gets second preference. Oxygen is usually negative two in a compound. There's two exceptions, or one exception, that's when oxygen is in a peroxide, such as H2O2. There's two compounds we've seen that in, hydrogen peroxide and sodium peroxide. So let's look at this. So here in water, we see oxygen, we got H2O. Oxygen is gonna be minus two. And since there's two hydrogens, they have to match that. Each hydrogen individually is plus one. Over here, we have carbon dioxide. In carbon dioxide, oxygen is minus two again. And carbon has to match that. Now there's two oxygens, two oxygens times minus two equals positive four. So carbon has to be a plus four in this compound. So that's use oxygen to help us determine the oxidation numbers of the other compounds. And rule number five, hydrogen is positive one in its covalent compounds. Notice it says covalent. If it's with a metal, it's gonna be negative one. But anytime it's a covalent compound, it's gonna be positive one. We just did water already, let's do HCl. So hydrogen here would be plus one and chlorine would be minus one. Let's do ammonia. We know hydrogens, there's three hydrogens. Each hydrogen in ammonia is gonna be plus one. And the three nitrogens have to match that, so that will be negative three. So the oxidation numbers are nitrogen is negative three, hydrogen is positive one. Let's keep going. So these are some summaries. You don't necessarily need to write all this down, but this is a nice summary of what we just saw. Oxidation number of any element in a compound, this is rule number one, is zero. So here we see all these things that are highlighted are zero. We see copper is gonna be zero. Oxygen here will be zero. Uh, Hydrogen, oxygen, both here will be zero. And I'm gonna put zeros in front of all these. Uh, and then we see mercury by itself is gonna be zero. And we see hydrogen by itself will be zero. So any element by itself is zero. Let's keep going. These are additional rules for helping us assign oxidation numbers. If you look at your periodic table, family 1A, which is sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, all those are plus one. And we've talked about that before. And if we look at group two, which is magnesium, calcium, barium, strontium, all those are gonna be plus two. And so we've mentioned those before as well. 
Now, group 7A, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, all those are minus 1. Now, there's an exception. If it's compared with another element that's going to, going to be more electronegative, those won't be negative 1. Let's look at this example here. Now, notice we said the most electronegative element of this of this set is going to be oxygen. That means oxygen is going to be minus 2. Since that's minus 2, it needs to be balanced out by the other two elements. That means hydrogen would be positive 1. And it also means chlorine would be positive 1 as well, which we normally wouldn't expect. But because oxygen is more elect electronegative, hydrogen and chlorine are both positive 1. So there's three oxidation numbers here. Hydrogen positive 1, chlorine positive 1, and oxygen ne negative 2. Let's keep going. Additional rules for assigning oxidation numbers, and you've probably seen me do this already. The sum of the oxidation numbers is zero in a neutral compound. So let's see how that works. And we've done this really already. We know oxygen is going to be negative two, and so oxygen is negative two here. But what happens, there's really two oxygens, so that means oxygen is really can, can contribute a negative four with those oxygens. Now carbon is a positive four, because it has to balance that out. And so if we put that combine that positive 4 from the 1 carbon and the negative 4 from the 2 oxygens, we're going to have a, a net charge of 0, so it's a neutral compound. Then rule number 10, the sum of the oxidation numbers is the same as the charge of an ion, like when we have a polyatomic ion. So let's look at this example here. We have oxygen, we remember this oxygen is negative 2. But the problem is there's 2 oxygen, so they contribute here a negative 4 altogether. Now it has to equal a negative 1. So we see it's going to be equal to the, the value for nitrogen plus the value of the two oxygens it has to equal negative 1. So that means the nitrogen here has to be a plus 3 value. So nitrogen's oxidation state is plus 3. Each oxygen individually in there has an oxidation state of minus 2. And then of course there's an overall charge of negative 1 which those sum up to. Let's do some more examples. So from here on out, we're just doing examples. What I would recommend if you want to write these down is not write down all the verbiage because that takes a while, but maybe write down the specific compounds and make sure you can do the oxidation numbers. So these are examples of where the sum of the oxidation numbers of the atoms are going to be zero. So for example, here's what we just did, carbon dioxide. Remember we said oxygen is minus two, and so we multiply minus two times two, and then carbon is going to be a plus four, and that's why the, the uh, the sum of those is going to be zero. Over here in carbon monoxide, it's going to be a little bit different. Remember, oxygen is going to be a minus two in carbon monoxide. So that means carbon in this one is going to be a plus two. So it's here, here we say this would be a redox reaction because carbon went from a plus four oxi oxidation state to a plus two oxidation state. So its oxidation number definitely changed. More examples. The oxidation number of simple ions is always the same as the charge. So, sim uh, so if you look at copper to oxide, we know in this compound right here, copper is plus 2. And so the oxidation state is plus 2. We know oxygen here is minus 2. So, in the, so its oxidation state is minus 2 because its charge in the compound is minus 2. If we look here at magnesium chloride, in magnesium chloride, the magnesium is understood to be 2 plus. The chloride is understood to be minus 1. So the oxidation state in that ionic compound, magnesium's oxidation state or oxidation number is plus 2. Chlorine's oxidation number or oxidation state is minus 1. Let's keep going. The algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers is always going to be equal to 0. So if you look at carbon tetrachloride, carbon is plus 4. Each chlorine is minus 1, so that gives you a sum of 0. And if you look at sulfur dioxide, it works exactly the same way. The, the oxygen here is minus 2. And then you multiply that by 2 to get the positive 4, which is sulfur is going to equal that. And then over here we see the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers is the same as the polyatomic ion, which we just mentioned. And here we see nitrate. In nitrate, there's three oxygens, which are minus 2. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. It's got to equal a minus 1. So that means the nitrogen has a plus 5 oxidation state. Let's keep going. So oxidation states, you have more examples if you look at FeCl2. Now in this one, we know it's iron 2, so the oxidation state on iron is plus 2. The chlorine has to equal that, so each chlorine is going to be minus 1. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because it has three atoms, so let's do this one. And each oxygen here is minus 2. Now if we look at that, minus 2 times 7 is minus 14. So we'll write that there, minus 14. 
and we see potassium is family 1A, so that's going to be plus 1. So we've got two of those, so that's going to be plus 2. So we know it's going to be uh, positive 2 plus a number here, and, and the oxygen has got to be equal to 0. So if you add those up, you know that number right here has to be plus 12. But plus 12 divided by 2 means chromium is going to be a positive 6. So the chromium's oxidation number here is a positive 6. All right, we've got one more in this sheet. It's potassium permanganate. In this one, we, need, we see oxygen is minus 2. We see potassium is plus 1. But we see the oxygens together, we wrote minus 2 here, are going to be multiplied by 4. So that means the, the negative contribution of the oxygens is going to be equal to a minus 8. So we need a number which combined with minus 8 will give a minus 8 and a positive 1, which gives us a 0. So the number that, that must be, that means manganese must be a positive 7. So manganese is plus 7. So potassium is plus 1. Oxygen is minus 2. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Plus 1. And that has to, that's going to equal a, uh, right there, negative 7. So you have to equal 0. So manganese is going to be plus 7. So calculate, calculating oxidation numbers, yet more ex examples if you do something like sodium chloride. Hopefully you see this one as being pretty easy. You just look at the simple charges. Sodium is going to be plus 1. Chlorine will be minus 1. Good. Let's do another one. Potassium oxide. Potassium, we see oxygen is minus 2. And then there's two potassiums, which are plus 1. And so potassium is plus 1.